Hi guys, so today is a super, super special episode because I have a girl with me who I've admired. Actually, I used to follow her. She used to come up on my feed randomly um, with her content. And I was like, who's this girl? Her content is great. And then she went on a couple of years later to become a supermodel and a really, really big fashion content creator. So today I have Sakshi with me. <laughs> Hi. Hi. And okay, first of all, congratulations. Sakshi just got married. <laughs> um, and if you are on Instagram ever, you would know about it because <laughs> no. it's like viral. Her photos are everywhere. How many outfits did you wear? Honestly, I think 10 outfits. 10 outfits. It was That's... a lot. It was just two months of just wedding. <laughs> uh, but it was the most fun. I have such bad withdrawal symptoms from the wedding. Uh, it's just like I miss it so much. I know. It's like post-wedding blues because all your family and friends, everyone's yeah, together. And I, and I don't know what to do with my life. Like, what, <laughs> when, when is the next exciting event? I know. It's such a downer afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's discuss this wedding for two minutes. Okay? Yeah. You had Anita style you. Yeah. So Anita is ex-Vogue fashion editor. She is, you know, she's a very well-known stylist. She does a lot of Bollywood celebrities. And I How did you bag Anita to style you? <laughs> she's just been my mentor for the longest time. And, uh, you know, we've been in touch ever since the lockdown. Actually, around the same time that you and I got in touch. Yeah. And then she's always been, you know, an ally of everything that I stand for. Yeah. So it's just been a, it's, it's been a very good relationship with her. So obviously, I always knew I had to be styled by Anaita. So I just messaged her as soon as the proposal was done. Yeah. The wedding is being planned. Anaita, would you style me? <laughs> and she, with the open big heart, said a big yes. And that's how it, it happened. And I knew I needed... Somebody to style me who also believes in everything that I believe in yeah. and who can also uh, sort of speak to uh, designers to dress me in a way that I want to be dressed. Exactly. You know, and I would be the most comfortable in. Yeah. Um, uh, as opposed to what they would like to see on me. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's my big day. And yeah. I think I needed somebody to communicate that. Yeah. Um, and she did it so beautifully. She did it. She looked wonderful. I mean, I'm sure you've seen the images, but you, if you haven't, please check them out on her Instagram. It's really good fashion inspiration. Um, for any upcoming weddings that you might have yourself. Mm -hmm. I want to discuss this because this was I found really interesting. So I was going through all your content, your, like her wedding content, because it's really addictive. And then <laughs> I came to a little reel that she posted the morning after the wedding. Yep. yep. <laughs> She's like, it's the morning after. Yep. And I'm like, how are you not in bed relaxing? How are you not dead to the world? The fact that you had the energy to get up and make a reel the morning after and... You had a little reel right before going into your wedding also, yep, right? Yep, yep, <laughs> That presence of mind to make a reel at that time. How is this even happening? Aren't you exhausted? Honestly, it's not about like doing it with this for the sake of just creating content. It's yeah. documenting what you're feeling. Yeah. Um, I honestly really wanted to document what I was feeling. Yeah. Right before I was about to change, Dolly Jane was standing outside and I was standing. They were just like rushing me up like, Sakshi, yeah. please go change. You yeah. have to go for the photos and then you have to go for the bridal entry. Yeah. But I was like, let me take a second because, you know, this is this is that feeling. Once I change into the outfit, it becomes very real. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to capture that second and I lost my voice, but I only wanted to say a yeah. just to sort of, you know, Relax like your take nerves. it in. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the morning after, listen, I have, I just have too much energy. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm a superhuman. Let's. Yeah, it's been established yeah. by everybody who has yeah. ever met me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the next morning we did, uh, we did like a lot of things, and then went to the pool. Then I took my dogs to the pool for the first time. Wow. Yeah. So I did a lot of things the next day. So it's. An even more memorable day for me. That's amazing. And also the good thing is that now, it's like some years later, when you want to go back to see how you felt in the moment, you have a document. Yes. You know, which is kind of nice. And I get yeah. chills when I see that video, literally, yeah. because I know what I was feeling in that moment. Yeah, that's so amazing. Okay, so now that the wedding part is done, which was amazing, um, I want to talk about your journey. Because when I discovered you just randomly, on um, on my feed on Instagram, you were making these cute um, transitional reels at your house. Yeah. And I just thought, like you said, like the energy was great. It was a lot of energy. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> yeah. You clearly were really enjoying everything you were making, even yeah. when the content was like from your house, very DIY. It was done very well. You had great energy. And I, I mean, I think you stood out from yeah. a lot of girls who were who were doing that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And from there, from being like a homegrown, small time content maker to becoming a full-blown model how many covers have you graced so far it's been a I must couple have done, it's been yeah, a couple I yeah. must have done more than more than 10 covers and more than 20 editorials 
Right, so I think more than 10 covers is probably the maximum for any plus size model in, in India. That is true. Yeah, that you're, is you're true. a pioneer for that Thank reason you. and also for the fact that there aren't any content creators who've transitioned to being a supermodel or yeah. who, who kind of do both. Yeah, that is yeah. also, you're very unique in that sense as well. Yeah. So how did this happen? Or was the growth really slow and organic? Or did or was there a plan to model? Um, like, what, how did it happen? I do think that there was strategy as soon as I realized that there's a market for it. Hmm. Honestly, I didn't know that there was a market for it for, for women who looked like me. Because, hmm. um, you know, back in 2019, there were nobody... There was nobody on the ramp who looked like me. Hmm. So that was really annoying, but also like I didn't know that that opportunity yeah. ever existed. Yeah. Uh, so as soon as I realized, okay, there is an opportunity, then I was just like, okay, what do we do next? How do we reach out? I knew that building a social media platform would definitely help me get into the rooms hmm. to make my point and my voice stronger. Yeah. And of course, to like talk to people like yourself or, uh, you know, lots of leaders and, you know, change makers and designers. Um, and def this definitely put in me in those rooms. And then I made them all my allies. And, uh, you know, so we take that uh, conversation of inclusivity forward. Uh, but yeah, like um, I, I was just, Modeling happened to me by chance, really. I was sitting there, like looking at an audition that was happening, uh, an inclusive audition. I was a very small creator at the time. I think I barely had like 20K followers or something. And then uh, this was for Reena Dhaka. Mm. And she told me, why don't you audition? Because you're such a pretty girl. Mm. Um, and I said, I'm not here for that. But she said, like, go Come, on the yeah. ramp and just like do it. And little did I know for that show, I would become the showstopper. So my oh, first wow. show I ever did, I opened and closed the show for the same show. That's amazing. And I had no idea. And then uh, FDCI started having a lot of inclusive auditions. And I got into the circle and then I just realized that if I have to stick to this uh, space, I have to work. So I really took a lot of lessons from Lakshmi Rana, oh, from she's, Sonalika. Lakshmi Rana is my favorite. She walks, yeah, like a, she walks like a, like a, like a queen, goddess. Like yeah. a goddess. Yeah. Like she's floating yeah. on the ramp. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I didn't take that for granted at all. Like I just knew that if, you know, this space is given to me, I have to make the most of it and I have to be absolutely brilliant at it. Mm. Uh, I can't just be a regular, just because I'm plus size and they want to show inclusivity, mm -hmm. it can't be like tokenism. I have to be a model. Right. So just understanding the basics of it and it's not as easy as smiling no, uh, in front of all. Or like, not at all. you know, having a confident walk. It's not like that at yeah. all. Um, there are so many technicalities to it, which I think I was aware. Um, and because I come from a business family, I'm like, it's, in, it's sort of ingrained in my mind to work hard at everything that you yeah. sort of set your mind to. Yeah. Um, so that's how it, it, it essentially started. But then we were in lockdown. And my content journey really, and that's, I think that's around yeah. the time when you found me. Yeah. And so did like a, a lot, lot of my of people. community. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, if you're doing something, you do, you be great at it. There's no I like. I agree. Because you're wasting jacks. your own time more than anybody else's. Yeah. You yeah. be the king at, yeah. at your own game. Yeah. So for me, it was always like all or nothing. Yeah. And I think that's the same with you too. I keep seeing you. Yeah. I just float. I realized, you know, I, I think, um, I would like to think that I'm this like great strategist, mm. but to a very large degree, I'm not. I just um, kind of take myself where life goes. And I think I'm an artist in my soul. I'm an artist, whether that means dancing, design, fashion, business, anything which is artistic and creative really appeals to me. And um, I also am very competitive and I like to be the best in what I do. So yeah. I'm like, okay, if I have floated here, then I will just be the best. Yeah. Also things that are not um, obvious to the eye, the things that don't exist yet, mm. things that are of the future really appeal to me. That I get amazing. very tired and bored of things that are already around and saturated. I'm like, what's next? Mm. And this mm. thing also that I'm always up to, I'm, I'm always thinking about what's next. That's my thing. And I always want to do what's next and I want to be part of the future. I don't want to be part of the past. Like I've done something great, now move on, you know. That is I, so I move on very fast also. I move on but very fast. But isn't that fast. the best thing? Yeah, it's Not really, a lot of people think like that actually. Yeah, I get emotional for half a second. Oh, this business was so nice. And then I detach and I move on. Yeah. Oh my I God. I know. It's, 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 I, I have that emotional moment and then I move on. That's, I think, a good quality in the sense that at least I don't mope over anything for yeah. too long. Yeah. And I know that when something has reached its peak, for me. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, this is as good as it's going to get. get. And mm. I have done what I sought out to do. And now it's my time to do something else. What is your favorite, favorite business actually? I really wanted to ask you that. 
my favorite is no business. Honestly. <laughs> is dancing. <laughs> yeah, I've been asked this like my whole my whole career, if I can say so, the last 10, 15 years. And I've always said in interviews that the one thing I'll know that I need to do for the rest of my life forever is dance. Mm. And everything else is tr transitionary. Like, it comes, it goes. I, I run a business for a couple of years, I sell it. I've started quite a few businesses and um, exited two as of now and then hopefully more also in the future but that's you know that's everything for me is not permanent but dance hopefully inshallah like if, I, if my health permits it mm. I want to dance till the day I die my guru is in his 80s oh my and god and he performed with us a few days ago so I think it's just so wonderful to be an artist you know because you're an artist forever yes and age has no just like how size should have no bar in fashion age has no bar in, in art i connect to that so yeah. much so sakshi i want to ask you also um you're super confident as a swimsuit model yeah now it being a swimsuit model regardless of size a lot of people do feel conscious you know yes <laughs> how do you gear yourself up for like a swimsuit campaign or a swimsuit runway walk i know you've done shiva Naresh. yes have you done others as well but you look um, amazing in those. I've in done those. a lot of campaigns, yeah. but on the ramp, it's the two times I've worn a swimsuit per se. It's Shivan Shivan Nirish. Nirish. I'm wearing them today. They love Nanga clothes, so <laughs> I love them so much, yeah, and yeah. they and they're just like they stick to their words. They yeah. they never like go back to previous standards, <clears throat> and that's something that I really yeah. admire them for. Yeah. But uh, you know, it's so funny, and people don't know this. Yeah. But the first time I actually wore a swimsuit was on the ramp. The first what? time ever. So the black swimsuit. You never went, went swimming before that. No, but I would never wear like a swim like a. Ah. Monokini, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, or a bikini. I would wear like a swimsuit with shorts. Because you felt conscious. Yeah, or something which is like full sleeves and just, you know, you, you get like a lot of... But hmm. Sakshi, from going to, from that, from never wearing yep. a swimsuit to directly wearing a swimsuit on the runway. And, and that to two swimsuits. I changed twice um, for the first show that I did. How confident you looked is as if you wear a swimsuit <laughs> every day and you go swimming every day. No, but yeah. you know, I, I, mean, I have to tell you this. Yeah. But the second I was about to go on the ramp, this wave of, uh, I, and I still remember what I felt in yeah. that moment. But you know, this <clears> thought hit me that you're gonna you're gonna change this industry forever with that walk. You have already. Literally, yeah. I I mean, I saw it, and then I was the only person who was talked about in that show. Really, I, mean, I only remember you to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah. Not that the show wasn't great; it was great. It was amazing. But I think you stood out. But yeah. but no, we stood out together. Everybody involved in this sort of. FDC, I shouldn't everybody involved. Yeah. We all stood out and we made history really. Because yeah. you'd never seen uh, a model who looked like me uh, in a major league fashion week. It was surreal and I just remember when I went backstage after the walk, people just came rushing to me. Really? I remember Eddie had come. I love uh, Eddie. Huh? And I think there were some supermodels who were present. There were some editors who were there. Everybody came rushing to me and I started crying. Because these were tears of happiness, completely yeah. joy. Yeah. Um, but they were like... You know, we've seen so many models walk on the ramp. Nobody was half as confident as you having the, not even the body type. No just, model, just model, no model yeah, was yeah, as confident yeah. as you. And you killed it on the ramp. And that's when I got the Harper's Bazaar cover. And that was my first cover really. Yeah, so we started that. on a high note. Yeah, My life fully changed forever since then. I think I was just put in that space and in, in that sort of time to do that. Yeah, I was ready for it. And you wouldn't believe my boyfriend, husband now, yeah. and my mother. They were there. Amazing. So my mom and my boyfriend were there in the audience watching the show, and uh, they'd never seen me in in a uh, bathing suit. In a you bathing never suit. Worn one. Yeah. <laughs> and the first time they see me, I I end up feeling history. So it was it was the coolest yeah. thing. I uh, I mean I and I that's why I feel so confident because I don't see bodies as something you need to be ashamed of or of course afraid of. Yeah. Um, I remember the ra last swimsuit uh, walk that I did again for Shivani Um I was wearing a, a, a sort of a cover up. And in that cover up, uh, I just knew that it was it was going to there was it was slightest pin yeah. attached to the it was going to like Open come anyway, off yeah. at any time. Yeah. And I told Shivan and I said, listen, this is going to come off. You're going to see my two piece. I'm not in a monokini. Yeah. I'm in a two piece bikini. Yeah. You're going to see a lot of me. You're going to see me like my yeah. butt all out there. Right. Are you okay with it? He asked me, are you okay with it? I'm like. Let's yeah. do it. Why wouldn't he be okay and with it? it? Already like, great. <laughs> and, it all, and it happened as soon as I, I mean, I crossed the front ramp and, you know, it was just, um, and then, you know, people applauded. Yeah. Because they were like, yes, we were waiting to see real bodies because 
um, honestly, beach is not for a certain body type. Beach is for everyone. You beach just need a body to be on the beach. Yes. You know, <laughs> I was going to say this. When you spoke about your mom and your boyfriend, I think this kind of confidence does come from a very good support system. That is correct. You know, I think like we don't just arrive, right? Mm -hmm. Like this. Mm -hmm. so somebody has made us the way we are, right? So whether it's our friends, our parents, teachers, whoever has an influence on us, even a good boyfriend can have a great influence on you because you end up spending That's a lot of time together, you know? Honestly. Yeah. So I think a lot of this probably has to do with that as, as well, right? The confidence. Your partner, if he or she doesn't empower you, um, then it's just then it's not going to happen. Um, you know, your parents can be close minded and that's OK. Um, <clears throat> but your partner needs to empower you in ways that uh, you understand. Um, and I think that is something which is very important. Of course, an overall support system is crucial. And um, yeah, I was really, really lucky. I yeah. am really lucky in that. I think capacity. unknowingly girls do look for validation, even boys from their yep. partner, right? Yep. Yep. Um, not that everybody needs it, but it is a common thing. It is a common thing yeah. and you, I mean, I'd be foolish if I say it doesn't exist. I read somewhere that confident, ambitious women need a, need very, very supportive partners or no partners at all. At all, yeah. yeah. So if you see a great, confident woman and you woman and you can't be supportive, then please don't approach her. Yeah. Just go somewhere else to someone else. It's very rare but it exists because I have a partner like that. He does not he have ego when I succeed. Like That's he's amazing. the person who cheers me up when I succeed. Yeah. And I see so many couples like really, I mean, they struggle because they feel like, oh, if the girl earns more than me, then it's, I have to be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Or if she's more successful in her career and I'm, not as much, then, you know, that's, oh my God, such a shame because you're a man and you're supposed to do that. Yeah. And uh, men need to just, I'm, I think both genders, they need to stop having egos if their partners succeed. Um, you need to really and uh, understand that, uh, um, you know, just keep working hard at your own thing. Hmm. Don't care about what's happening around yeah. you. Just focus on yourself. Just focus on yourself yeah. and uh, really, I mean, love and care and support the person who's next to you regardless of whatever is happening in the in the world or what society expects you to do yeah i mean i've been really really lucky um i imagine imagine my father would have said you can't walk in a swimsuit because i knew i was going to walk in a swimsuit or my mother would have said and that was my first walk i would have definitely not walked right or i would have said would have not felt so confident so confident yeah. you know and the fact <clears throat> that they were like yes please go yeah you, we, you know? we need these open minded parents yes. you know I think our generation, most of us are open-minded, but it's the generation above us. It's their kids who are doing things, you know, yep. Yep. who are changing the world right now. Yep. Um, so they need to be super open-minded as well. Okay, Just, so what now that you're married? I mean, marriage doesn't really change anything. No. When you have kids, things will really, really change. <laughs> I am so <laughs> excited to have all of this time to now focus on everything that I've ever wanted to do. What do you want to do In now? the last year. I honestly, I want to take <clears throat> things global. That's, a, some, ah. that's something that... I I, um, yeah. I have been eyeing for the longest time. I want to do more projects that honestly do something to the industry and, you know, take content creation to the next level mm. in terms of um, the kind of content that's going out and uh, the kind of an impact that content can have on the younger generation. It has a big impact. So even if I'm changing a small part of my world, I want to make that world bigger and bigger mm. as we go and hopefully uh, start a brand of my own. And, ah, uh, lovely. What do you yeah. want to start? Like skincare? Fashion that retail. I can't discuss now. Okay. I've already had this for the longest time in my head okay, and now great. it's time to act on it. Great, great. I want to ask this also because people, some people do say and discuss that um, this whole co world of content creation and social media, it's a bubble, it's going to burst. Is Do you agree with this? No, I really don't because honestly, um, I don't see digital media going anywhere. Mm. I do think that there might be new platforms that will come up after five years. Facebook was so relevant right, five years right, back. Right. It's not anymore. Uh, today Instagram is, tomorrow something else can be. But I don't think content creators are going anywhere anytime right. soon. There are many content creators, for example, Deepa Khosla, Masoom Minawala, they've <clears> been <throat> in the industry for the longest yeah, time. Yeah. You know, they were bloggers first and then now have such successful businesses. It's like any other entrepreneurship. You have to adapt evolve. with time and, and evolve. evolve. Yeah. As long as you don't have ego, like for people like you, you know, you get bored about f from one thing and then you move on to the next thing without, you know, feeling like, oh, I failed at that or I succeeded at that or it reaches me. Like, you don't have ego about your no past, ego. right? Even till today, I message and call people for things. I have no ego because yeah. I'm like, what's the worst? They'll just say no. Yeah. Most yeah. people don't now, thankfully, I'm in that position. Yeah. But even then, I just have no ego. And also, like, I just, yeah, I think it's a really good thing to be that naive also in a way, you yeah. know? 
that yeah. oh no don't think too much you know yep i honestly there's a long life for me yeah, and i'm not going yeah. anywhere yeah. um i'm only going to evolve and hopefully um you and i will succeed together exactly. and you know be on this journey exactly. together so you know i get i used to get a bit annoyed not that i'm a full time content creator myself at all but even for the girls who are i used to get annoyed when people uh used to say things like and i think they were just they were just being haters but they would say things like oh like being famous on social media is being like rich in monopoly but it's really not true because these girls are making legit money they i have seen content creators I buy mean, houses for their parents i mean, I mean. <laughs> it's not you can't buy house a house in delhi or bombay with monopoly money okay <laughs> they're making real money yeah. they are in a real <laughs> business yep <laughs> so i get really irritated because i'm like You know, everyone can see these girls are making money, or yeah. boys. You know, and how are they buying? Like people from like a middle class family, how are they buying exactly. Dior bags on Dior bags? And they are making it. You know in what life. I'm saying? Nah, they, they are running a business. This yep. is this is also a kind of business. Yeah. So I think belittling them or trying to be like just because it's not a traditional business that you're not used to. You mm. you have to also evolve. There are going to be other kinds of modes of. um income and making money that that are going to change and you have to move with it right there are so many brands who are now wanting content creators at brand, as brand faces as mm. opposed to traditional I've actors i've seen this i've seen this and uh, you know i've been in that position myself where i was a face of a very famous brand uh, and now bhumi padnekar is the same you know what i'm saying like yeah, that's amazing. there was so, so you guys are coming some... coming into the same category almost yeah yeah i mean in like, a way in a way we, we're getting yeah. the same similar opportunities yeah um and and uh, you know the community that we have honestly is just so strong hmm. people are realizing it brands are realizing it there is a reason why you can see so many influencers on the ramp now as well right exactly. and uh, they're just everywhere it's not yeah. because because they came from literally nowhere and they worked hard and they built a community and they built a voice for themselves hmm. it's not a backing they're not coming from families that just put them there hmm. uh, and there is no nepotism in this space at exactly. all exactly they're all self made they're all self made yeah. made and um, and they're not egoistic they'll still go for auditions mm. and they'll still uh, you know sit in rooms where you know people might judge them or might tell them that oh you're just a content creator but no we will sit in those rooms and then we will explain this is what we do i'm not just a content creator i'm a creative writer i'm a producer i'm a director i'm an editor i'm a cinematographer like i have to think from every single angle exactly. i know everything about the biggest cameras i know everything about the editing equipment i'm not just a content creator and i know everything about finance of exactly. my business exactly. you know i i don't run a, a page which is called style me up it's actually i run a company that is called style me up it's actually and you're a one woman show yeah. most of them for the longest time before they even had teams they yep. were like a one person show it's not easy yeah to yeah. handle payments to handle deliverables to handle camera a lot of them were doing everything themselves which is amazing actually yes yes that is you correct know? honestly i mean we're doing the work while people are talking we're doing the work and i mean the world is changing because of us as we know it it's true and you and people are seeing us creating history every single day so do you think like we're discussing your the influence of at least the big content creators is quite big do you think that you have to be responsible in your content absolutely like would you associate with a brand for example now <clears throat> there's a, a very public genocide on would you associate with a brand that's very obviously associated to genocide or not even genocide any other brand that's unethical in any way do you yep. do some research see a brand approaches you will you do the research to be like what is the background of this brand as big and as small as they may be do you do that do you find a responsibility in this every month i say no to a shit ton of money <laughs> yeah. just because i don't want to associate with a particular brand yeah i don't want to associate with any brand that um f- uh, promotes skin lightening or hmm. you know things like that or just weight loss you know believe in everything that i believe in because yeah. then i'm cheating on my community for little money yeah. and then you know then there's no long lasting then what do you for stand it. for then you i'm not standing I mean? for anything yeah. so that's for me it's extremely important to be ethical because i cannot take this community for granted they they follow me to the point that if i say something that i'm using this body wash they will go ahead and buy trust this you. body wash yeah. in bulks yeah, yeah. you know it's almost like a blind trust and we mm. we sell out things for brands all the time really i myself have supported more than 100 200 homegrown brands and changed change their life and change their game forever as we know it because of the power that my community holds there is so much responsibility and also we we have to be on our toes all the time because one wrong mistake one wrong 
uh, unison tense or uh, just like a lousy statement also uh, bring a lot of backlash back to us. Yeah, but you're humans too, right? So people need to understand that if, if on the most part you're you're trying to do your best, yeah. everybody can slip up, slip right? Up. Like also the internet is not for, forgiving at all. That's no, the problem. No, it's not. You know, they have to know that everyone's a human being. You can slip up as long as you acknowledge it and then move on. No? What's the big deal? Have you seen the movies that, uh, you know, people used to make 20 years back? Honestly, the ones that we've genuinely loved. I don't think Karan Johar can make a movie like that but anymore. But he says himself that, you know, you know so that s s some of the characters were very regressive. He's, he he recognizes, recognizes that. that. And then he made a really woke film like Rocky or Rani to kind yep, of, yep. you know, um, make up for everything else. So he's evolving. That's what I'm saying. People evolve, right? The internet sometimes doesn't allow people to evolve. That's mm. the problem. Okay, so I want to ask now, like, give me like one or two beauty and style tips for like all the cool people who follow you. Like, like it doesn't have to be complicated, something simple. Like for me, for example, like I'll dice in my hair, I'll put it up. If I have to go in the evening, I'll put it up in the day. Yeah. And then in the evening when I open my clip and I take it out, it's just so much smoother and it really stays in place without me having to put spray. I'm not a yeah. fan of spray. Yep. So yep. like things like that, like one or two tips that you, you want to give. Always carry a tint with you. A tint? Yeah. What's so a tint? A, like, a, like a cheek tint or a lip tint. Ah, okay. It is such a game changer. I cannot go anywhere without it. Yeah. Even if I'm going to the gym, just like put a little bit of Benetint on you. Yeah, yeah. And it instantly freshens you up. Honestly, less is more and I'm always up for a sleek hairstyle. Me too. A bad hair day me equals too. a sleek hairstyle. It cannot go wrong and it's always such a quintessential for me. Me too. Every time I'm like, yeah, I bad hair day, up? like yeah. sleek it up. <laughs> Aloe vera gel on the hair. Really? As I opposed to a this. hairspray. Really? To s create the, the the best sleek hairstyle without like effing up your hair. But doesn't aloe vera gel make it really sticky and like yeah, gooey later? Yeah, but you know sometimes with the sleek hair you want that stickiness yeah. and you want it to be in place. But it washes out fine? Yes, that's the best part of it. It doesn't okay. ruin your hair. And now tell me, um, this is a standard question. Because if I don't ask it, people in the comments will be like, why didn't you ask this? <laughs> um, now everybody and their mother is becoming a content creator. Yep. Especially in the fashion space. Yep. How would you tell someone or give them advice on to stand out? Because everybody's doing it now. Hmm. It's boring. You know what I mean? I found a really good content creator, a Sardar, a fashion blogger. He was incredible. But, uh, but from like, New how York, would, right? No, he lives somewhere in Punjab. I have to stalk him some more now. Okay. Maybe next season I'll get him. Okay. <laughs> He's so cool. But like, and the average girl, for example, because there's so many girls doing this. Maybe yeah. he stood out because he's, he's, he's a guy and, you know, there are not as many guys. Um, what advice would you give? How should they stand out? Because it's all the same. Honestly, um, see what's sort of lacking in the market and always be authentic to your voice. Yeah. Because everybody has such a different yeah. way of talking, <clears throat> presenting. Uh, as long as you're not trying to be the next da-da-da, yeah. um, you're good. And there is a community for everybody because, you know, people reach a point of saturation even seeing a content creator. There are so many content creators that I used to follow so rigorously back in the day that mm. I, I, I don't even know what they're doing anymore. Mm. So, you know, you, as an audience, you tend to get, get a little bored. bored. Yeah. Um, so they're looking for new faces all the time. Um, and for already existing content creators, don't have the ego to evolve. As simple as that. Stick to your voice, but like... Don't be afraid to evolve. Nice. You have to move with the times. Now, what choice does anybody have? Yeah. You'll get left behind only, I guess, mm. if you don't. Yep. Okay, I want to thank you so much, Sakshi. Thank this you was so such much. a good chat. Like, I knew she'd be super intelligent and articulate. <laughs> and I also feel like this time is not enough. So, let's just casually have a coffee sometime. Done. Because I could chat so much more with her. But yeah. um, I knew you'd be amazing and you were. So, chalo. And so are you. Fulfilled expectations. <laughs> and we share the love of dancing. Oh, and I know. Yeah. Do you do you train professionally as well? I don't. But you're I a great I dance, dancer. I dance very differently. I'm, I mean, I'm more of a Bollywood at a party. Like I love Bollywood too. <laughs> I love Bollywood too. So, okay, fine. We, we, we'll party together. Yeah, Bollywood yeah. dance party. Yes. Done. 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 Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you.